you're starting a whole new course called Geometry. And geometry is all about shapes and their interactions with math. We are going to start today looking at the basics, the building blocks of geometry called points, lines, and planes. Now there is a huge amount of vocabulary, so make sure you have your note-taking sheet out and you're going to fill in blanks as we go. I apologize for the length of this, but it's kind of like starting a new foreign language. You have to get the vocabulary down. So here we go. Our goal today is to name, define, and use the building blocks of geometry, and that would be points, lines, and planes. So the very first thing that we're going to talk about is a point, and a point is kind of a nebulous concept. It's just an exact location in space. It has no dimension, so fill that out in your sheet, and it is represented by a dot. We just put it on paper as a dot. On a coordinate plane, we represent a point with an ordered pair. A point is named using a capital letter, and that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about is how we name things in geometry. Oops, sorry. Okay, so for example, if I have this point, and I'm going to just pick a nice big fat point there, I would call it point A. And that's how I would name that. Now, if at any point I'm going too fast, just push your pause button, and you can fill in the stuff that I have written down. I'm going to go pretty fast, so this won't be a huge PowerPoint. Okay, the second thing that we're going to look at is a line. Now, a line is actually a collection of points. It goes on forever in both correct directions, and since it goes on forever and ever, it cannot be measured. And it is a straight line. Okay, it has one dimension, but it cannot be measured. And through any two points, there is exactly one line. The way we name a line is by any two points on the line or by using the word line and a cursive letter. So on this particular line, I could call this line A, B, and notice what I put over this is a little line with two arrows. Or I could call this B, C, A, C. Actually, I can use name it using any two points on the line in any direction. Or I can say line, and then if you see, I have a cursive L up here. So I could call this line L. Not all the lines that you have will have a cursive letter associated with them, so most commonly we will use two points to name a line. Okay, if you have points that are on the same line, those are called collinear. As you can see from this example, A, B, and C are all on the same line, so they are collinear. A and D would not be collinear, nor would uh, uh, A, B, and C be collinear with D. All right, now a line segment is different from a line in that it has two endpoints. It can be measured because it stops at the endpoints. A line segment is named using the endpoints. Now notice on a line segment, Again, you can go in any order, S, T, or T, S, but we draw a line over the top of it without arrows. That indicates that this is a line segment. 
array is a line that has one endpoint and goes on forever in one direction. Array is named with the endpoint and one other point on the array. Now this is rather important. The name of array always starts with the endpoint. So this is a um, geometric figure where it is important that the order of the letters is correct. You start with R because that is your endpoint, and you say RS with a line drawn over it with only one arrow on it. You would not say Ray S R because you must start with the endpoint. All right, now there is a thing called opposite rays. And that is rays that sh share an endpoint and go in opposite directions to form a straight line. So in this example, you can see that QR and QP are opposite rays. Now notice that I've started each ray name with a Q and the arrow goes to the right, not to the left. The arrow of the ray does not indicate the direction of the ray. The next thing we have is a plane. Now think of a plane as a flat surface that goes on forever in every direction. A plane has two dimensions, length and width, but it cannot be mirrored cannot be measured because it goes on forever. Through any three points there is exactly one plane and that is what we use to name a plane. We name a plane by any three points on the plane or by the word plane and a capital letter associated with the plane. So like in our example we have the capital letter M for our plane. So one of the ways we could name this is by using the word plane and the word M. Since I have the word plane in front of it, I know that M does not represent a point. Now say that I have some points on this plane, S, R, Q, and T. Well I can use any three of those points to name this plane, and here's how I would do that. Again, order does not matter. So here are six different variations of names I could use, and that is not even all of them. That I could, uh, all of the names I could create using these four points. All of these are ways to name a plane. Notice that I do not have commas between those. Coplanar means points that lay on the same plane. Now it's somewhat hard to visualize because obviously we're dealing with two dimensions here and I'm really showing you a three-dimensional three concept here. I'm saying that points S, R, and P are laying on plane M, but point Q is a point that's hovering above plane M. So S R and P are coplanar, but Q is not. Again, if at any time you need to pause this recording to get caught up or to write down things, please do so. Now an intersection is when geometric shapes have more than one point in common. Now let's look at a couple of different kinds of intersections. First, let's look at the intersection of two lines. When two lines intersect, and you saw this uh, from systems of equations, you always get a point. So in this example, A, point A, is our intersection.
when you have the intersection of a line and a plane, you could have two things. If the point pierces the line, or pierces the plane, then you will have a point. Like we have in our first example. So in this case, notice that when I'm drawing the plane and a line going through it, I have used a little dashed lines to show that, hey, it's gone through the plane and that's back behind the plane. Now in my second example, I have a line laying on the plane. So the intersection of the line laying on the plane would be the entire the line. So in the first example, if that line pierced the plane at R, the intersection is R. On the second example, line RS lies on the plane, so the intersection is line RS. All right, and when you have two planes that intersect, I actually drew this for you on your paper because this is very difficult to draw. When you have two planes that intersect, you get a line. So when these two planes intersect, they actually intersect at line Q here. So the intersection is line Q. All right, now let's do, well first, let's stop. Make sure you go back and have all of your vocabulary filled out and review it. Then let's do some practice of the types of problems you might see. First, give two other names for line PQ and for plane R. Well, you need to see that line PQ is this line, darn it, sorry, is this line that pierces the plane. Now notice that we have a P and a Q as points on the line, and the line also has a cursive letter associated with it. So two other ways to write line PQ is line in or line QP with a line over it with two arrows. Now, they want you to also write two other names for plane R. Notice that R is a capital letter that is associated with a plane that doesn't have a point. And then we also have points V, S, P, and T that are lying on the plane. So we can use any of those points to name the plane, and they only want two names. So I chose V, S, T, and P, S, V. Notice I don't have to use the word plane, because anytime I use three capital letters representing points, I know I'm talking about a plane. Now, name four points that are coplanar. So that would be points on the plane. And I actually have them highlighted. It is V, S, P, and T. Notice the Q is up here on a line hovering above the plane, so it is not coplanar. All right. Give two other names for line ST. Now notice that line ST is the line that's laying on the plane, and it also has the letter, or the cursive letter M associated with it. So I'm going to use line PS with a line with arrows above it, and the word line with the letter M as two other ways to name line ST. All right, 
Now I've been given a figure and I need you to name the intersection of line PQ and line K. Now first you have to visualize where PQ and line K are. And two lines always intersect to give you a point. So where these two intersect is right there at point M. Notice I don't have to use the word point because a capital letter by itself represents a point. Number five says name the intersection of the plane A and plane B. Well, I know that the intersection of any two planes is a line. And where these two intersect is right here on line K. Okay, now I need you to name the intersection of line K and plane A. Well, first you have to see that plane A is this plane, and of course this is line K. It looks to me like line K is laying on plane A. So therefore, the intersection of line K and plane A is line K. All right, now I need you to name the intersection of plane UXW and WST. It's important to know that even though this is a box, if these were actual planes, they would extend on forever. So they are just intersecting to make this box. Okay, so the plane of UXW is the top of the box and plane WST is the back of the box. So where the back of the box and the top of the box intersect is this line right here, which is line XW. And of course, it is a line because when two planes intersect, it becomes a line. The intersection is a line, sorry. Now the very last thing I'm going to ask you to do is graph some points and tell whether they are collinear. Now remember collinear means that they lie in the same line. So the first thing that we're going to do is plot these points. Now the easiest way to see if lines on a graph are collinear is just to get your straight line tool and see if it does form a straight line and indeed it does. I wonder why that is not showing up. Um, oh, there we go. And indeed it does. So these lines are collinear. Okay, again, go back over your vocab. Make sure you know all of these and especially know that you know how to name each one correctly. Because when you are doing your practice, it's going to be a lot of naming things correctly and I think you're ready for your practice.